let's get this bad boy started all right all right all right all right what's going on guys it's a little late for me this evening yes it is over here in iowa yes sir got finished getting unloaded this morning which was real crazy and then got loaded like real quick now i'm over here in the parking lot of the casino yeah yeah i did i i went in you guys didn't have to ask i i went in did i play <laughs> yeah 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 i played you you guys didn't have to ask did i did i do good uh let's just say i came back out with the money i went back in anyway anyway what's going on guys lock out men in the truck on the 30 for this podcast for this afternoon but i do have afternoon damn it man it's night it is night but i do have a special interview this this evening man um check out this video right quick let me let me let me see if i can let me see if i can bring up the article let's see let's see if i can bring up this article there it is from cdl life this article popped up and it says trucker was roughed up by security guards and scored a major win but he's planned to keep on fighting now this video this this incident actually happened last year sometime and i seen the video but i i didn't pay too much attention to the video at that time until this article popped up Here's the video. Let me see if I can get it to play. Now, you guys got to, you guys got to, hopefully you guys got to work with me on my internet. But this is the video right quick. Now, it don't have no sound or nothing like that. But the the incident right now, uh, the trucker, the young trucker is going around and, you know, opening up his uh, truck for the security guards. But. If I fast forward to maybe seven minutes, is it seven minutes? About four and a half minutes. Oh, about four and a half minutes. All right. So there we go. All right. So four and a half minutes in, we see the young trucker right there still talking to the security guard. Now, we're not sure what's going on, but we will ask him. But it looks like, you know, he's he's walking, you know, he's walking off. And then I say a couple. Let me fast forward a little bit. Like I said, you guys gotta, you guys gotta bear with me with my with my internet, because unfortunately I did not get a chance to uh, download the video to actually uh, play it straight through. Well, I did get a chance to download the video, and here is a little bit of it right here. Where the security guard tried to stop the young man from going to his truck. Looked like he was about to get on there, but that's when he got physically assaulted. Him and his wife. There's about three of them so far. There's the fourth guy coming in, roughing up his wife, roughing up him. You know, just messed up right now. Messed up right now. But looks like my internet is is jacked up again. I guess that's what I get for having a internet on a on a phone. Anyway, all right. Well, I did reach out to this young man, um, and uh, ask him to come on the podcast to uh, to talk about what happened. So let me go ahead and bring. What's your name? Clinton Kirker. Clinton Kirker. Kirk? Okay, see, I'm butchering your last name. Kirk? No, Kirker. Oh, Kirker. See there? All right, all right, all right. So let's go ahead and bring Clinton Kirker to the show. What's going on, Broham? Oh, uh, just uh, working, trying to keep on keeping on, you know. <laughs> trying to trying to live up in this piece, man. Trying to live up in this piece. All right. So for everybody that don't know who you are, man, go ahead and uh, let let my people know who you are and and uh, and what you do. Well, my name is Clinton Kirker. I'm uh, I'm a truck driver. Uh, recently, an owner operator. Uh, I started uh, leasing a truck in 2016 and had actually purchased the truck that you see in the video 
in February of 2018. Okay, okay. So you, so right now you are owner. So you're a full owner operator owning your own truck. Yes. The only difference between me and an independent is I'm not an independent owner operator. I lease on the company mm -hmm. and I get their fuel discounts and their uh, insurance discounts and whatnot. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so I was about to ask you if you had your own authority or something like that, but unfortunately, no. are are you working on that, though? Uh, no, I have no interest in doing my own authority. Oh, okay, okay. So right now, you just own the one, the, the one truck. You Do you plan on getting more trucks or just uh, rocking out with just the one? Just the one, and I have good reason. <laughs> <laughs> well all right man all right so uh who who are you least on to and uh or i mean if you don't want to if you don't want to tell me you don't have to but i have i i don't have any issue telling you i'm currently leased on with uh tri-state expedited services okay they're based out of toledo ohio okay okay so there uh so this is an expert so this is so tell the people what's the difference between expedited and from any other regular long haul truckers uh expedited pays better on a rate per mile basis and it well even uh if, if it's a percentage you usually get a bigger cut of percentage but the loads that you get are wanted asap uh typically they want team typically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, to get it the expedited uh, in its own word, it means to get it there as fast as possible, to be done expediently. Right. Okay. So that's what I do. All right. So this is uh. So being that it, being that you run an expedited, you run in teams with uh with the young lady on there that uh, that I believe to be your wife. Yes, that's my wife, and I was running team with her. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So both of y'all. So both both of y'all got uh both of y'all got the CDLs. Um, when did you, when did you, how, or how did you obtain your CDLs? Did you did you went through school or did you go through a trucking trucking company or how did you how did you get your uh, CDLs? I actually went through Truck America training in Shepherdsville, Kentucky, in two thousand and five. Okay, okay, okay. All right. How about your wife? Um, uh, she went through Roadmaster in Columbus, Ohio, in 2014. Roadmaster. Now you know, I just found out that Roadmaster is owned by Warner. Could you believe yes. that? I did not. I, I did not know until I actually uh, read that. I mean, did that podcast on that article that I wrote uh, that I read about uh, Roadmasters and uh, Warner. So. Being that your being that your wife went through Roadmasters, did did y'all two uh, just started just started teaming with each other right after she came out, or did she go solo, or did you? Now I'm assuming you went solo way before she did, but did she go solo, or did she just jump right on the truck with you? Um, I made her go on with Werner for a couple of months so she could get some training in with uh, trainers mm -hmm. because I'm not a trainer. You know, even though um, I'm her husband, but it's the way I come across to her. Sometimes she thinks I'm criti criticizing her when I'm not. And uh, it creates some argument, but I think that happens in a lot of relationships. Right. So I thought it was best that she started with uh, an actual qualified trainer before she came on the road with me. Okay, okay. So between the both of you guys, how much experience that you guys got, all, I mean, got in total? Uh, as of right now, I just celebrated my 15th year driving truck, mm -hmm. and my wife uh, she has just a little over five years. All right, so the 20 years before, I mean, between the both of you? Oh uh, yeah, pretty much. All right, I got I got this quick question for you: Who who wear the pants in the truck? <laughs> <laughs> well let's put it this way she is 51 percent owner so who do you suppose wears the pants <laughs> so by you i literally go through her okay okay so by you guys team driving and being uh being a married couple uh operating the trucks should be 
a little a little simple. Tell tell me how how life of a married couple on a uh, on a truck is. Um, let's put it this way: if you don't really get along uh, when, when you're with your wife when you're home, it's not a good idea uh, to be a team in, in a eight by what eight by six box. Mm-hmm. It's not a good idea at all. Uh, we got along. We hit it off. We met in 2003, and uh, we, we we've just we've been like you know, I don't know, flies on paper. I mean, we can't get away from each other. Okay. You know, we we do well together. We have we've had a few arguments. We've had a few misunderstandings, but uh, you know, we limit our alcohol use. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we try to respect each other's wishes, and we have gotten along very well. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. All right, so being that you guys, being that you guys team, how, how long have you guys been teaming together? Every, uh, right, I know you said right after she got out of uh, training and everything, but how, how, long have y'all, how long have y'all been teaming together? We actually started teaming in the same vehicle – in February of 2015. Oh, okay, okay, and it's just been and it's just been gravy ever since. Oh well, yeah. I mean, we've had our ups and ups downs, and downs. But for arguments, you know, ups and downs, and uh, you know, hey, we need to work. Well, I don't feel like it, you know, so I have to give in to her and let her take a few days off to recuperate and. You know, I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs, wanting to run, and we can't run as a solo, so I had to wait for her to be ready before we could run again. So that causes a little animosity because, you know, I could be making the money, and yet I'm being held up. But in the end, we have fun. You know, uh, what we would do uh, if we get a load to Florida or California or somewhere we would want to go, we would take a few days off after running hard for a week or two and uh, go have fun. You know, we, we've been to uh, no less than 12 theme parks across the country. Okay. Uh, Six Flags, you know, Six Flags in uh, Dallas. Uh, we've been to Disney. We've been to SeaWorld. Uh, we've been to a theme park. Uh, well, you've heard of, uh, of course, you've heard of Cedar Point being of, from Ohio. Uh, of course. Okay, well, Cedar Point owns something like 10 or 11 parks across the country, and we had bought passes in 2016 and we went and went to six of them across okay. the country okay that's so what's, that's what's so up. that's what we did do you do you yeah, do, so, do you do you guys have any kids we have one child it's actually hers from a previous relationship mm-hmm. he is actually 20 22 years old oh, okay okay so you guys are so you guys pretty much are empty nesters well, yeah, I guess you could say that. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, this current company uh, that you're with how how long you been with how long you been running for them? Um, I started working for them the weekend before Labor Day of 2019. So, sometime around the August 30th, 31st, something like that. I'm not sure of the exact date. Okay, so you just got so you just got with them. Yeah. All right. And and let me let me uh let me flip back over to your wife right quick. You said she went to World Masters. So did she did did she come out of the pocket with World Masters or did she go to Warner after she did World Masters? Oh, she went to Warner, but we actually had the money from her 401k from where she lost her job and we put a nice a substantial down payment down on a uh a student loan to put her through school. We didn't sign okay. any contracts with Warner. Okay, so you didn't want to. Get, that's good. That that's a good thing. If you guys, if you guys could figure out of you know paying for your schooling right off the rip, that's a good thing. Because if you let a company do it, you got to sign a contract, and then you got to be obligated to them for uh, a year, six months, nine months, nine times out of ten, it's a year, but. If you guys put your money down, if you save us some money, then y'all could pay for it yourselves. Y'all wouldn't have nothing to worry about. All right. So between the both of you, man, what what uh, how many companies have you guys uh have have you guys went through before you came and settled on the company where you which you with now? 
Okay, so uh, we we started leasing in uh, 2016 with Panther Premium Logistics. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we was with Panther uh, up until February of last year when our truck was destroyed in an accident. Uh, a straight truck uh, F350 with a box. Mm-hmm. I, I guess you call that a straight truck. Yeah, straight Lost truck. control came across the medium and uh, crashed into us. Destroyed our 2016 Freightliner. Oh my God! You now. No, this when when where did this happen? This happened in Kansas, but I can't remember the exact name of the town right offhand. But it was on I seventy. Oh wow! And the the truck the truck that hit you lost control and just came straight over into you guys. Yeah. I am glad that you are here. Thank God that you. Yeah. Made, thank God that you. Uh, that that you're here, man, because that sounds like a horrible accident right there. It was. I, I can send you an article and uh, pictures of what was left of the truck after we get off here. If you okay. want to see them, yeah, that yeah, definitely, definitely, man, definitely. Uh, again, I'm glad that you guys are here, and uh, whew, man, all right. So that's what that's when you was driving with Panther, right? Yeah. Would would you still after after all said and done? Did you did you stay with Panther or or what was next after that? Our contract was canceled due to the fact that we didn't have a truck, and uh, we were both too injured to continue on anyway. We were under doctor's care and not able to work. Okay, so this was so the the truck that you was driving was yours. Yeah. Was now. I, I'm assuming it had insurance. The company, the, oh, the company, the company that 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 hit you. Did they they took care of getting you another truck, right? No, they they have not paid out a dime yet. So you still fighting for that? Yeah. Oh wow, that's. And how long ago was that? Uh, February twentieth. It'll be a year. And y'all still, and they and they still. What what's the hold up, man? What what's the hold up? Why 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 they not letting the insurance take care? I mean, obviously it was it was the uh, it was the driver's fault. Why? Well, for one, my wife is still under doctor's care. Um, okay, she has uh, has to have injections in her back due to. Uh, but it's a combination of both the accident and what happened to us in Olive Branch, Mississippi. Right. Uh, the combined injuries, uh, you know, she has PTSD and she has, uh, I think it's called a herniated disc in her back now. Yeah. Man, that's, man, that 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 is so, so, so crazy, man. That is so, so crazy. All right, so let's... Uh, my internet is still acting up, but we I, I'm I'm bringing up the uh I'm gonna bring up the article, uh read a little bit of it, and my man could go ahead and uh let us know what happened. But I came across there, the article reads uh, a husband and tr- a husband and wife trucking team say they had succeeded in fighting the criminal charges that led against them in the wake of a violent altercation between security guards at a distribution center in Mississippi. Now again, this happened last this happened last year, but they they won their court case uh this year. The incident began when the clerkers arrived at this distribution center to pick up what they thought was a grocery load, but come to find out that it was a pharmaceutical load instead. So, I'm going to go ahead and let uh and I'm going to go ahead and let my man take over and explain to us what happened when they got there. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and talk to me, man. Okay. September 11th of 2018, so almost a year and a half ago, we uh, were assigned a load, asked if we wanted to take it. You know, it was not explained to us as to oh exactly what it was just the where it was uh picking up and where it was going we accepted it and uh you know we started heading that way from uh atlanta georgia well we got there early we spent the night at the uh 
flying J truck stop that was just like a mile and a half away. And I, I'm sure a lot of people know all the branch of Mississippi Flying J. So that's where we spent the night. Got up next morning, went over to uh, pick up this load. It's on Marina Drive. Uh, when we get there, uh, there's already a truck in the road or in the driveway. So we're sitting staged on the road. And uh, they finally let the other truck through. And they started waving at us to come in. Well, you know, most drivers, most typical drivers, I would imagine, uh, when you're pulling into a driveway, you stay to the right of the road, you know, kind of like an imaginary center line. So you try to stay as close to the right as you can. Well, he started trying to wave me to the center of the driveway. So I went over to the center of the driveway and uh, he walks up to me and says, I need your ID. So, you know, we got our IDs out and handed it to the guard and we walked into the uh, guardhouse. Well, as the first guard walks into the guardhouse, the second guard's walking around the truck with a mirror, which we, yeah, we, we, we found it kind of odd considering we wasn't told anything, but, uh, you know, it was kind of like a military base. We've had it done there, but, uh, you know, military is a little different, you know, if there is different protocols, I guess, but, uh, these guys, um, after he done his mirror thing he walked up to me and says where are you coming from well i uh, i thought about it for a second i said atlanta georgia he's like oh what time did you get here uh like last night he's, well you know you could have spent the night i'm like yeah i don't usually do that as a shipper well anyway uh the, the first guard that took our ids come out and uh says we need to uh, my wife needs to step out of the truck Right, I'm watching and the video I, now. My my uh, my internet just came up, and I'm watching the video now. As your wife just stepped out of the truck, and then you just stepped out of the truck, and you walking back, uh, with the other security guard. All right, if you look just as I go out of the screen toward the back of the truck, you'll see me pull my hand out of my pocket. Okay. That was the first time the guard. That was the first time the guard told me to remove my hands from my pocket. Okay, but now let me ask you this right quick. Let me let me ask you this. What I mean, what what, what is this place? I mean, you had to take your hands out your pocket. You had to. Now I can understand a truck inspection. I get that part. I understand that. But take your hands out your pocket. What 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 is this? What 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 is this place, man? Now at the time I didn't know, but. They do pharmaceuticals for the CDC. Okay. They store pharmaceuticals. They are a pharmaceutical storage warehouse, but they go under the name of Metro Logic, Metro Food. Okay. Okay. And that, and as you said in your, as you said in the article, at that time you didn't even know that you was picking up ph- pharmaceuticals. You you thought you was picking up groceries. Well, actually, I didn't know for sure what I picked up. Somebody said groceries, and they ran with it. You know, I may have said groceries or, farm, uh, um, you know, something, you know, something normal. It could have been cups, for all I know. It could have been makeup, for all I know. Okay. You know, a lot of the loads, yeah, I've done makeup. I've done uh, Sony video games. So, you know, it wasn't anything too out of the ordinary to go through that kind of stuff. But what was ordinary was them or un, you know unusual was them telling me to remove my hands from my pocket yeah that that is kind of unusual man i mean that's i never i i never been to uh a distribution center where a guard actually tell me to remove my hands from my pocket i mean he'll tell me to like you know get out of the truck they'll go with a mirror and all that other stuff but Remove your hands from your pocket, though? No, nah, man, I, I haven't right. had that. I haven't had that. All right, man, go ahead and continue. Um, well, it just basically, uh, at, at the video at the end of the screen there, as you can walk out, uh, I pulled my hands out. So that was the first time he told me. Walked to the back of the trailer, opened the doors, and as I'm walking back up, um, he stops, turns around again, tells me to turn my, uh, take my hands out of my pocket. So that's number two. And then when I come back into the screen after opening up the hood, I put my hands back in my pocket. And that's when the beginning of the confrontation really started. 
because he was acting like he was, you know, my boss or, right. you know, my parent telling right. me, you know, I told you to take your hands out of your pocket. And I just looked at him. I pulled my hands out of the pocket. You'll see my hands kind of moving a little bit. What I said was, you know, it's a comfort thing. You're just going to have to deal with it. Well, right. I guess they did kind of deal with it, but not the way I meant for him to. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just, I shook my head, which you can't really see in the screen, but I did shake my head as I'm walking away. And I'm walking over toward my wife, which is just out of the video shot. Right. And uh, the guard, the guard follows me about half and then walks to the guardhouse and then turns around and walks back over and starts pointing at my truck. At that point, he said that uh, if I can't follow their rules, I need to leave. Okay. And I looked over at my wife. Go ahead. No, 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 no. No, I'm going by what you say. You know, you, you said that he said uh, to leave, and I'm like, okay. So, let's yeah, leave. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I looked at my wife, and I said, are you done? She says, I'm done. I'm ready to leave. And so, we start walking toward the truck. And the gentleman in the black outfit steps in front of me and tells me I can't leave. And I said, I'm leaving. I told you I'm leaving, and that's what's going to happen. I take but two more steps. He steps in front of me again and says, we still have your license. I said, well, give me my license back. And uh, he says, we're not done with them yet. And I whatever, man, and started walking toward the truck. And as you can see, I'm actually heading as close to the truck as I can. And he puts his arm out. As yeah, I'm, to, I'm watching. You know, I'm watching uh, now because he's step. It looks like, it looks like you're walking over, and then there he is. He's that's where he stops you, and then boom, that's where all hell breaks loose. And looks like because I ended up against the truck. Yeah, that's like I said. This where all hell breaks loose, and then by the looks of it, I, I paused the video. By the looks of it, it, looks like you fell on your wife. Yeah, I'm not sure how that. I, I've watched it several times, and I'm not real sure how all that works out. Yeah, because I, 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 I tried to, you know, if I if I try to rewind it, it's going to buff again. So I'm going to hold it right there. But I watched it like at least, at least five, ten times, and it's just like your wife just popped up under there, and I'm like, where'd she come from? I'm like, where'd okay, she come from? So all right, so if you back it up just a few seconds before the altercation begins, you'll see her standing beside the fence just inside the video shot. Oh, okay. All right, when the guard puts me against the tire, my wife actually starts running toward them. Oh, okay. And you can see her going because she's wearing pink socks. If you right. follow the pink socks, you'll see where she came from. <laughs> okay okay now see here's here's now now this this right here just totally pissed me the fuck off i'm i'm just gonna i'm just gonna just come out with it it it, it, it pissed me the fuck off because this dude right here in the black the this dude right yeah. here in the black the the black t-shirt that motherfucker just come over and and just start and just start roughing you up on the ground. I mean, it was already bad enough that you already had the the one dude over I mean the one dude that was on top of you, but this dude, this cocky motherfucker just came out. It looks like he's trying to get his arm up around your neck to put you in the chokehold, man. And then this other dude, the bald headed fucker, right here, just came out of nowhere and just and just need you in the in the back of your head, man. The, all the, yeah. all all this shit right here is 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 just is number one is unnecessary. Number two, like I said, it it just pissed me off. And and all they had yeah, to, I, all they had to do was just to let you leave. Yeah, that that's the only lawful thing they could have done was hand us back our license and tell us to leave. And then the, and we were more than willing to leave. And then Sorry. and and then. Over in the other cut, you got some. You got dudes coming over there roughing up your wife. Now hold up. Let me let me say something right quick. Now, if you guys notice, there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, about six dudes on these two. I mean, on this couple right here, and it's about like maybe four, 
four of them is just on the wife alone. Roughing up the roughing up the young lady like she's a dude. I mean, this is this is really irritating. This is really heartbreaking right here. Yeah. They drug her essentially from where it started at the spear tire, they drug her all the way back to the first drive axle and then about halfway back to where the uh side box is. And what's up with this what's up with this ball headed fucker? I mean, dude just went from went from you over to her. Like it wasn't enough it, it like it wasn't enough uh dudes over there to to uh to handle your wife. Well, we think the one that put the knee in my neck is the same one that put their knee in her back and that's part what? of the reason why she has Okay, yeah, because yeah, see I'm looking because I, I I'm I'm looking and you 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 can't see because it's a little like it's a pole right here, but it's a pole, yeah. Unfortunately, the pole blocked a lot of what it was done to her. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm looking. I'm. I'm still watching the video, and they. They. They rough you guys up pretty bad, man. That's. That's that. That's that's a horrible thing, man. And all they had to do was just. Uh, all they had to do was just give you your license back, and leave. You know. Yeah. Now, if I had refused to leave, then it would have been a different story. They would have had the right to uh, keep us from leaving and wait till the police show up. But we weren't refusing to leave. We were refusing to stay, which means they had no authority whatsoever to keep us there. All right. So now that every now now that everybody decided to, you know, sit you up, they got you, they got you and your wife in handcuffs. What yeah. what was what was the conversation going? Because it looks like they all like high fiving themselves, and I mean, it don't show that in the video. But I'm I'm just I'm just elaborating on the fact that that they that was they that was they doing. But what was the conversation going on? I don't remember a lot of what was being said, other than uh, while the conversation, uh, yeah, while the confrontation was happening. I remember a couple of times being told to stop resisting and the one dude that came running and made me do the face plant, he uh, told me that uh, I was going to jail and I'm, I'm thinking, no, you all are going to jail. That's, you know, you just assaulted a truck driver. Right. You, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they called the police and the police showed up, the ambulance showed up. And I refused treatment. I told the the medic that uh, if if it wasn't deep enough for a stitch, I wasn't going to the hospital. Right. And uh, they che they checked out my wife, and her pulse was steady at like 160 beats a minute for you know for the entire time that they were there. So they recommend taking her to the hospital for observation in case she had a stroke or something. Man, that's that's crazy. So I fast forward the video up here to the I guess is uh up to the 48 minute mark let me see whoops wrong button up to the 48 minute mark and it looks as though the cops arrived and looks like the lady cop is putting handcuffs on your wife or taking handcuffs off your wife Look. I believe they were taking handcuffs off of her to be put on the stretcher to be put into the ambulance. Okay, okay. Now, being that the being that the the cops is there and and your wife is in pretty bad shape, man. I mean, yeah. That's that, that's just again, like I said, this this is so damn sad. So what did what did the police do, man? Because I read in the article that that you was the one that was arrested and charged. Yes. Um, the police took the security guard's handcuffs off of me and patted me down and uh, put his handcuffs on me. Uh, prior to him taking the security guard's handcuffs off of me, uh, he told me that he was going to be taking me to jail for uh, 
simple assault and disorderly conduct. And I said, what do you mean? I didn't assault anyone. We were the ones assaulted. And he looked at me and said, well, that's for the judge to decide now. And that was all I got in as for any kind of say to the police. They didn't take a statement from my wife or I or, or nothing. You know, they basically arrested me based on the security guard's word. Did they get... Did I mean? It's hard to believe. I know. I, I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at the video. Ain't no way that you that you should have been charged with that, bruh. Ain't no way you supposed well, to. You. you you shouldn't have been charged with that. Dude stopped you and got in your face yeah. and and started a yeah. fight with you. Yeah. And the. And, and this, again, this is in Mid uh, Olive Branch, so Olive Branch police Mrs. officer. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. And, and and all right, so what? Since they took you, they they you know they 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 arrested you. They took you to jail. How how long was you in jail for? Well. I, I can't remember the exact time, being that I was in the central time zone. I was there either seven or eight hours. It was uh, that altercation happened just a little before eight o'clock Eastern or central time. Mm -hmm. And I I vaguely remember looking at the clock when I first got out and, it, and my my clock was my watch was set to uh, Eastern time zone. And it was something like five o'clock, maybe five fifteen. Jesus. So I'm assuming your truck was towed. You had to yeah. you you had to you had to get it out of impound. How how much yeah. how much was that how how much that set you back for? It was around eight hundred dollars. I don't remember the exact amount now. Oh, okay, okay. So it so it wasn't that bad. No as far as, far um, as getting your truck back. No, the uh the guys that towed it, um, they didn't know exactly what had happened, but I told them uh, what had happened that day. And uh, from what I understood, they kind of felt sorry for me and didn't charge me the full rate. Well, a much much love to those guys, man, because they they part they could have been dicks about it for real. But uh, much love to those guys, man. So, all right, so. Your wife is in the hospital, so you you, so you guys is pretty much shut down for a little bit. How how long is your wife was in the hospital for? Uh, she was actually released before I had even got out of jail. Oh, okay. um, they they weren't going to do anything for her. They wanted to pump her full of drugs, and she refused. Being a truck driver, you know right. we we can't be on drugs. And uh, we didn't know what was going to happen with the company we was leased to, which is Panther Premium Logistics. And uh, we sat there. We bailed out. We, we uh, posted out the truck the same night, but they let us leave the truck there overnight. We rented a car, got a hotel, and went back to the truck the next day. And uh, we, we took it to the pilot because that it, it was like two miles where the truck was towed that night to the pilot there in Memphis. I okay. think it's actually Memphis. Yeah, um, right there it's on right off of two, right is it off of uh, it, it, it's two is it's two pilot uh pilot. It's two pilots or at least at least I know from a little ways from Olive Branch, but I know there's two pilots right there off of 78 Lamar Avenue. Did you did you go to that one? Okay. No, no. It was actually the love uh further closer to Memphis. It's oh, okay. Like right you went to the, the Loves. Street. Okay, okay. I know where that one's at. Okay, so uh, we actually uh, stayed in the truck with a car rental for three days. So this happened, I believe, on Tuesday morning, and uh, we sat there until Saturday morning when I finally got tired of sitting there, not knowing what was going on. Panther weren't wasn't returning our phone calls, so I uh, returned the car and drove back to Ohio to where we live. Okay. And I I contacted Panther uh, the following Monday, and they never returned my phone call. 
I contacted them again that Friday. They didn't return my phone call. Finally, 17 days after the event, they called me and told me that uh, they reviewed uh, what what happened at, at Olive Branch, and they uh, were going to have us return to work immediately. Wait, hold, hold up. They, they wanted y'all to come back to work? Yes. 17 days later though they didn't have to come yeah. they didn't have the courtesy to call you guys to let you know what was going on or it, it, even if they was reviewing the incident i mean they we, no, nobody from safety mm-hmm. called you up and and asked you if you was like mm-hmm. all right or anything like that no they didn't so all we knew is that we were on a safety hold Pending review is what it said. Okay. But they did. And go ahead. I'm shocked, man. They they didn't. So for the whole 17 days, you guys did not hear nothing. Period. All the way up until somebody from safety said, "Hey, you can come back now." Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. <sighs> Mm. Well, you know, you, you got to look at their point. I mean, I don't fully agree with it, but I do understand it. You know, they are a business. They're mm-hmm. catering to customers, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm pretty sure that that customer, even though I'd never been there in three years that I've been with Panther, I'd never been there before. I'm pretty sure they're probably a good paying customer to Panther. Right. And they didn't, they, they, they cared. And it's, I hate to say this, but it is, it's lightweight, a shame that, you know, and I, I, I understand. I, I understand too. It's, this is a business, you know, without, right. the, without the customers, they, they not making no money. So they, they gotta, they gotta do, I get, they gotta do what's right for their bottom line. And if throwing you guys up under the bus will help their bottom line, then that's exactly what they was gonna do. But I, I'm I'm still right. I'm still shocked that what nobody watched the tape until I don't know what what their investigation entailed, but they said that after their investigation they had determined that uh, they weren't gonna cancel our contract and that they were sorry it took so long to do the investigation, but we were welcome to return to work as soon as we were able. All right. Now let's uh let's uh let's let's get to the court thing, man. What 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 happened what happened during court? You 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 got a you got a public defender or you, you had your own lawyer or did you represent yourself? Oh, I definitely bought an attorney. I paid out of my pocket for an attorney. I wasn't about to use no public defender. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So with the uh, with the, with the court battle, man, it says in the article that you that you was that you actually was found guilty. Like, really? What was your yes. What was um, your feelings on that when you when you heard the judge say that? What? Well, let me ask you this: Was it was it uh, a judge verdict or was it a jury verdict? Judge, it was a bench trial. City of Olive Branch. The the video. Oh, I'm I'm tripping. The video was was entered as evidence, right? Yes. So, it took me two months to actually get that video. So this, so you, but so you went to court before you got the video, or you went to court after you got the video. I got the video in November, uh, just a hair over two months after the incident. Um, it was my okay. So the way it worked, uh, October was my arraignment. Uh, November was my pre-trial. December was supposed to be my trial, but I released the video. And because I released the video, my original attorney stepped down. He didn't want to fight my case anymore because I re- uh, released that video. What? So I had to scramble. Yeah, <laughs> I had to scramble to find another attorney. Wait a minute. You you mean to tell me? You you mean to tell me? Do step down. 
because you you released this video proving your case. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you so you scrambled. You got another attorney. You got the video. And un unfortunately, he wasn't able to be there on the day of trial in December. Okay. So we had to ask for a continuance. Okay. Our continuance was granted for January, I think, 24th. And uh, he was up to speed. You know, he had watched the video. Um, he, he was gung-ho for me. You know, he was ready to fight this. And... We got get in the court. Uh, the security, the two main security guards were there, and uh, one of the security guards, the one that uh, was dressed in all black, right. he was uh, an Olive Branch police officer, a former Olive Branch police officer. That's and I'm, he I'm looking actually, at. I'm looking at the video again. You said the one that was in all black. So that's that's the white guy with the beard. No, the African American guy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I see the one that's over there. Uh, the one that's the one that's roughing up your wife. That was in all black. Yeah. Oh, okay. The one that actually started the altercation altogether. Oh, okay. 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 So yeah. All right. So they there, and I'm flabbergasted. Like, how? What was your feelings when right when the judge said you was guilty? Like. I'm sure your eyes okay, was like so, your eyes and your mouth was like wide open. Like, what the hell, man? They were. Okay, so he says that I'm going to find you not guilty of uh, what was it? Uh, simple assault. And I smiled, and I looked over at my wife, and she smiled. Right. And he so, said, "However, however, I'm going to find you guilty of disorderly conduct because your truck blocked the entrance." To their facility for two hours. Stop yes, it! My eyes went wide, my jaw dropped. I looked over at my wife. She had a mad look on her face, shaking her head no. And she says, "You are not guilty of this. You are to fight." I want. She wanted me to appeal it, and uh, I I went online right after the verdict, and uh, I told people. I told you know I I went. I did a Facebook live video. I told everyone what the outcome was and that I needed their help. I, I, you know, I pleaded with them, please help me. I need financial assistance to continue the fight. Right. And, uh, within, within a week I had had, uh, something like 1800 to $2,000 sent to me. And, uh, right after the accident, uh, which was about three weeks later, somebody else sent me a thousand dollars. Man, so listen. altogether, I had about three thousand dollars given to me in donations to help fight. Thank God, thank God for yeah. the trucking community to come together, man. That's that is what's up. Now I'm looking. I, you said the judge said that you 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 blocked the you 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 blocked their driveway. How did I'm watching yeah. the video? How did in the hell that are you blocking the driveway? What you what you blocking? You got two security guards talking to you. One is doing the doing the 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 security check on the truck. I'm assuming, and the other guard is talking to you. What the hell is you blocking? Yeah. The gate is closed. I don't know. Yeah, I know. The gate the gate right here, man. The gate right here is closed. So who is you blocking? Had I not. Had I not been attacked, had they let gave me my license back, had they let me back up out of there, my truck would have never blocked their entrance. They blocked their own entrance by not letting me leave. Right. But yet the, the judge, he he said that I was the one guilty because my truck blocked the entrance. Dude, man, come on now. I, I'm I'm I'm. The gate is closed. You got two guards over here. You got one guard asking you to, to get out. You got one guard, the other guard asking your wife to get out, where she's getting out right now. Uh, You got the one guard in the beige, what's that, tan? Look like beige or tan shirt talking to you. Tan. Tan shirt. Yeah. Okay, now you get out, and uh, you, you know, he asked you to open the, you know, open the hood of your truck. Now, let me ask you this. It's all of this going on right here. You're at the exit getting ready to leave. And they doing all this inspection 
now? No, we had just got there. We we had just pulled up on the property. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. You okay, okay. You this you at the beginning of the uh you at the beginning. Okay, okay, I see it. All right, the way I'm looking at yeah. it, I see it. All right. So they Yeah, that that's the entrance that we were at. They they doing an inspection on you and the truck, but the judge said that you was blocking their entrance? You had no choice but to yeah. block the entrance because you was you was being inspected, right? I was I was being unlawfully detained is what was going on. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. When you yeah when when it was all said and done, yeah, you know. Yeah, I I honestly don't know at what point that I was actually intentionally blocking their entrance to the facility because there was no intention on my part to block the entrance to the facility. My intentions were to get in my truck, my property, not a company tr uh, truck, but my own property that I pay my own payment for and right. leave. Okay, so, so people said, well, how are you going to leave with the hood open? Well, isn't it usually uh, a trucking company, if you decide you're not going to do a load, you need to call them? Well, my phone was sitting on the dash. And I was going to my truck to get my phone to call my company to, uh, while I was closing up the truck so that I wouldn't be, you know, I, I, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Get on the phone, call my company, close up my truck and get in the truck and back out and leave. And that's and and by the and by the video, that's that's what it was looking like you was doing, you know. You right. know the blatant disrespect from 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 these shippers and receivers, man. I mean, it's 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 real. I mean, we got proof positive right here that some of these guards at these shippers and receivers just, you know, just let this power thing goes to their head, you know. And that wasn't even that that right there wasn't even called for. You know, the whole situation was just was just ugly man it was just all ugly all right so a year later uh a year later how how was you able to how was you able to over get all this overturned and what's the and what's the future for for you so far okay so um it took about a month to file the appeal and uh my attorney finally sent me the paperwork late may or late uh, february my original court date was scheduled for May, and between uh, February and late May, the prosecutor uh, had a heart attack. Whoa. So my case, yeah, my, my case got postponed, and it went six more weeks to mid-July, and I got a letter in the mail uh, over the 4th of July it said that I need to be in Olive Branch on like July 15th, give or take a day or two. I can't remember the exact date, but uh, I showed up and it's a Tuesday. Nobody's there. My attorney shows up. He, mm -hmm. he says, uh, we got a problem. I said, what? And he said, uh, give me a few minutes and then I'll be able to explain. So he comes back about 10 minutes later and he said that, uh, Olive Branch didn't assign a prosecutor to your case, even though they knew this was going on. So they requested another continuance. All right, so the continuance got extended to September 30th. So I'm there on September 30th, and nobody's there again. And so, you know, I, I, I asked my attorney, I said, isn't there a statute of limitations? And he said, yes, we haven't reached it yet, but uh, uh, it, it'll take another month or two before we can actually file for that. So now we're talking, uh, oh, no, probably right before Thanksgiving. And he says, uh, you know, has it been long? I said, have it been long enough yet? And he said, yeah, it's actually been long enough, but uh, I don't really want to do it. I want to fight this. Right. I'm like, okay, okay. So finally, a week later, you know, I get a new court date for January 24th, and uh, finally, everybody shows up, the prosecutor showed up, of course, mm -hmm. the judge is ready to 
you know, listen to the, the case. My attorney's there. My wife's there. I'm there. Uh, an attorney for Metro Foods is sitting there watching the uh, case. And what appeared to be a security guard for Metro Logic, but I won't swear to it. Anyway, uh, prosecutor gets stands up and, uh, you know, says that uh, due to the circumstances of, involving my case and the lack of witnesses, they wanted to uh, no longer prosecute my case. So I got a, uh, I got some pictures right here that uh, that I just popped up right quick. Let me make sure that I got the right one. Uh, let me make sure it's not that screen. Whoop. Not that screen. Hold on. Gotta get the right one. There we go. All right. So I got some uh, pictures that I found on on your Facebook post, man. And yeah, they 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 roughed you up. Uh, they roughed you up pretty bad. You got bruising around your around on your head. Your uh, gave you a black eye. Uh, how on your arms, on your legs, on your back. Man, this this some this, of those pictures are actually pictures of my wife too. They were kind of mixed up. Oh, okay, it was missed in. And uh, again, bringing back up, uh, bringing back up the video, man. I am um, look on on behalf of uh, behalf of me, man, and uh, and my podcast and my viewers, man. I am so sorry that you had to that you had to experience that uh that 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 BS right there, man. You know, it it just goes to show you, like I said, that some of these shippers and receivers. You know, especially the kinds that got guard shots that just think they, they, they above the law, man. And 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 him getting in the situation, man. For shame on uh, Olive Grant, uh, Olive Branch, uh, uh, courts, man. That that shouldn't even went that far. You know, it shouldn't even went that far, man. All right. So what's the what's the future for you now, man? What we I mean, what's what, uh, it says here in the article uh, that I read that you 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 took out of a, a civil uh, a civil suit against the uh, the security company and the security guards that roughed you up. Yes, um, I, I do have a uh, civil suit. Uh, my wife and I against the security agency, the security guards, and the facility that it happened at. Um, I have posted it on online on my Facebook uh, as to the exact charges. Uh, what you see is what you get. You know, you, you can go assault and battery, uh, slander, libel. Uh, there, there's some other charges involved there. I don't want to go too far into it, uh, being that it is a, a civil suit that hasn't gone to court yet. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it, it's pretty substantial. And uh, my attorney is actually the one that came up with the figure uh, and he said it was basically to get their attention to let them know we were serious. It's, it's very substantial. That's what's up, man. Well, hey, look, like I said, man, this this that that is so 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 crazy, the whole thing. But uh, at least um, at least you got at, at least you got a at least you got a win. Uh oh, hold on, right. There we go. <laughs> At least you got to win. It, it, this is this is the first. Uh, this is the first to come up. You know to give you uh, to give you a win for you and your wife, man. You know, hopefully, uh, hopefully that you guys are able to uh, definitely get some type of monetary uh, value out of this whole situation. You know, to show this. You know, to show the company that you guys are serious and that. Um, and that you guys, you know, that you guys was 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 demeaning and disrespected. Period. Period, man. All right, all right, right. all right, all right. So, 
Well, for starters, man, I want to thank you for uh, coming on, sharing your story, man. I really do appreciate that you uh, took the time to come on and uh, let us know what's uh, what happened, what's, what went on, and what's going on with you. So what's um, so what's so you you good now? I mean, you you good now? I mean, you you're getting there, but you're good now. Um, I, I don't think uh, we'll ever really be over this. Uh, you know, yeah, you, my that, wife. Yeah, this, this, def, like, you ain't gonna never be over this. This, this, you, this no. right here, you're never gonna get over. You know, but I'm, I'm just glad it didn't deter you from, you know, stop, you know, stopping your passion, which is truck driving. So, no, the only thing that's gonna stop me from driving truck is dying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, this this is this is my life. All right, man. So, uh, how about your wife? Uh, what's uh, how she feel? How 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 she how she doing? Uh, PTSD, recovering with the uh, herniated disc. Uh, she takes shots in her back, some sort of uh, oh, I don't remember what it was called, but they they put shots in her back every three months now, and uh, you know it's. It, allegedly helps with the pain uh she's actually uh returning to work with me on a part-time basis and since it's my truck i determine what part-time is not them okay so uh we're, we're going to start her out at three or four hours a day and uh you know of course i'm going to drive my 10 11 out so that's going to give us an opportunity for you know 14 to 16 hour days uh, to make a little bit of money as a team or as a, I guess what you call a super solo. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll be able to put up, we'll be able to get more miles under our belt than what a solo can, but not as many as a regular full blown team. So, you know, that'll help the income. That'll help us pay down some of the debts that we've gathered over the last year and, you know, hopefully get us stabilized. All right. So who, um, the, the, the lawyer, the law firm, uh, how, how was you able to, to locate the the law firm? Did somebody uh, somebody referred them to you, or you you was able to find them on your own? Um, basically went online and started. Uh, I actually I think it was Google Maps. I typed in attorneys near me now, and since I was an Olive Branch, it started popping up a whole bunch of attorneys. And uh, I just kind of blindly dialed numbers until I got a response from somebody, and uh, he could see me that day. All right, that's what's up, man. That is what's up. <sighs> well, Clinton, man, look, thank you again for coming on, uh, sharing your uh, sharing your story with us, man. It's this, like I said, this is just a sad situation. These, especially. Let me, let me pause. Let me let me pause right quick. Don't go nowhere. Let me let me well, let me bring you back, bro. Let me let me bring you back. This dude right here, and this dude right here. But I, I hope, I, I hope you go in their pockets for real. I mean, two guys over here making like what fifteen dollars an hour. Probably double that. Man. They, I, I, I want to let you know they they are a high powered security agency. They have federal contracts with the government. The guards themselves are unionized with full benefits. Oh, okay, okay. This... And I, I also want to let you know, and you're welcome to look this up. They have a history of doing this to people. I I could ima um, I, I would imagine because that don't look like that was just an isolated incident. It looks like they, they, they get rough with drivers all the time. Well, it's not just drivers. Uh, they, the, uh, they had a, a security guard in Toledo, Ohio last year pull a gun, pull a firearm on a uh, 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 Ohio sheriff's deputy. I don't remember what county he was out of, but it was up by Toledo. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, you you saying that's the same company because... I I did yeah. I, I did a video on uh a black sheriff's deputy having a gun pulled out on yeah. him by by the dude that was in the IRS. That's the same company. Yeah, that's that's the same company. And that's not an isolated incident like I used to believe. 
Are you serious? No, I, I'm I'm serious. It's a heart attack. Oh uh, my they, god, they that can't to... that can't be that can't be a coincidence. Because like I said, I I just did well, not just did, but uh, like the middle, like last year. This happened last year with with the with yeah. the deputy sheriff and and the security guard pulling the gun out on her. The dude was leaving. The dude the dude yeah. was actually leaving. And the and the security guard calls himself, blocking him for leaving. Now, see what surprised me was, I'm just surprised that the deputy sheriff didn't turn around and, you know what I'm saying, yoke that dude like, for real, <laughs> you know. But I think that that sheriff did well under the circumstances. Had I been the sheriff, I probably would have pulled my weapon and fired at him. <laughs> So this is the same. So this is the same company that that uh, yeah that these security guards work for. Yes, yeah. they also did it to a military veteran at a, a VA hospital. Uh, it was either last year or the year before, and the guy uh, was actually trying to suffocate the veteran. Put his hand over his mouth, and he the the veteran screaming, "Get off me! I can't breathe!" And he's covering up his mouth, and it's all on video. And uh, they filed charges against the veteran for disorderly conduct and something else. And uh, it took over a year for that veteran to uh, get the charges dropped. Wow. Well, Clinton, so, man, I, I'm glad yeah. that uh, I'm glad that the uh, charges was dropped uh, was dropped against you because it it definitely wasn't warranted. You, like I said, the video proves that you didn't start the altercation; they did. And uh, and like I said before, man, I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that you're able to uh, get some monetary value out of that. No matter how long it takes, you you definitely deserve uh, some 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 type of uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. But you deserve some type of monetary value coming your way for this uh, total incident, man. So uh, you got a good lawyer. He's working on it and uh oh yeah and yeah man so i appreciate i appreciate you coming on to uh talking with me man well, all right so i what, appreciate you having me on oh uh, no problem man no problem uh one more thing man and i always like to ask my guests this question man but uh what's more important truth or happiness <laughs> um well you can't really have both so i'd rather i'd rather have uh happiness happiness that's what's up man and i that i yeah. wish you i wish you happiness for you and your wife man tell her i said get well soon make sure you guys get back out on this uh road and uh rock out with us man and uh and uh yeah make sure you take care of her and take care of yourself man and um and uh you definitely you definitely stay blessed and you will you will forever remain in my prayers man thank you you're very welcome. You're very welcome. All right, y'all. That is uh that's uh Clinton Clerk Kirk Kirker, right? Yeah, Kirker. Kirker. All right. So Clinton Kirker, don't be no stranger, brother man. You are now part of the LOM community and all like that. So you have a blessed one. You have a good night. Get some sleep and uh and we'll talk again soon. All right, thank you. All right, man, take it easy. You too. All right, y'all. That was Clinton Kirker. I, I did not want to butcher his name. <laughs> Definitely did not want to butcher his name. But, man, can y'all believe that? Can you believe it? I mean, such such a sad ordeal that, that had to happen to him. But, you know, we... Us truck drivers, we, we don't get no respect. No respect at all, man. It's crazy that he had to that he had to go through that. And and for the judge to say he was guilty. Like, really? I mean, you guys see the video. I will link the vid I'll link the video and you know, I'll link the video in the uh description in the uh description, but 
but yeah man yeah man so again thanks to uh thanks uh clinton kirker for coming on sharing your uh story with us man i really do appreciate it if you guys want to come on and share any of your stories with me on lockout men podcast definitely hit me up in the email lockout men at lockout men podcast at gmail.com Holler at me. Let's let's talk. That's what we do. That's what we do. If you guys want more content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and I will definitely, definitely get back at y'all in another video. Peace.